I'd really like to thank you as our clients for being here again at the macro conference. I'm excited to listen to the speakers. I think these are big themes. These are real thought leadership principles. Um, I have many questions. I'm sure you do too. Hopefully we can get some answers. The macro conference is an opportunity to step back a little bit from the rigor of normal chores and life and thought processes to force us to think more strategically, to think a little bit deeper beyond our normal workday life and to contemplate the future. We're thinking about the big issues, not just for the next quarter or two, but for the next two or five or ten years. One of the major risks for our region is that we are increasingly heading towards stepping points in the regional climate system. The southern African region is warming quite rapidly at, a, at more or less twice the global rate of warming. And those changes bring a range of risks increasingly so to agriculture and specifically the risk that multi-year droughts are posing to water security in southern Africa. We know enough about the climate change and the climate system on earth that we can act now. I'm proposing an impact model of sorts where we can start thinking about how does the climate change affect stranded assets, affect infrastructure. This notion of impact models is a way of getting industry players to start understanding scientists and scientists starting to understand what industry needs. Climate change presents large opportunities, but to actually realize these opportunities, we need to have new and brave conversations between industry and scientists. Otherwise, we're in for a very rough ride. And that's the implication of what we're here to talk about today. There we sit in 2019. There's been great change in the world. But folks, the steep curve lies ahead of us. The next 20 years are going to see, is going to see more change than we've seen in the last 100. I'm a futurist, so I look into the future and try to understand what the trends are. And if I choose one factor, I think it's connectivity. The fact that we are the most connected society the world's ever seen, which is enabling people to do astonishing things. The fact that the nature of work is changing because people can communicate from anywhere and therefore derive economic value from connectivity. Globotics, that's globalization and robotics smashed together in an ugly but hopefully memorable word. For me, a person living here in Kibera, how would I have gotten a job for a person in America? Globalization is driven by arbitrage of price differences and South African professional service workers are underpriced by international standards. And as digital technology allows professionals and service sector workers in South Africa to work in offices in the developing countries, it will be an enormous export boom. So I think the development path of South Africa will look a lot more like how India succeeded and a lot less on how China succeeded. They are hungry for change. They cannot wait to get their hands on the system so that they can change it and remold it. They don't care if they get fired. They don't even care if they get arrested. And I'm calling them born activists. Belief-driven activity is impacting consumerism because more and more buyers are actually doing things based on how they feel and their beliefs. So this is uh, playing out in two ways. One, by consumers not wanting to buy certain brands, so boycotting the buying of uh, services and, and products of certain brands, but also the opposite, which is boycotting, which is the intentional buying of a particular brand because you want to support not just their products, but their messages and their values. All of us. 24-7, 365, are emitting and releasing data because of these portable devices. We are releasing and having data stored by private corporate servers in ways that we have almost no understanding about whatsoever. But what we maybe perhaps naively didn't realize is that they are for-profit businesses interested in their own returns. There are asymmetries between the worlds where technologies are built and the rest of the world, right, which is billions of people. Yes, uh, we have a lot of powerful possibilities to use the internet to make our lives more efficient, but the internet has to be increasingly imagined and built in the image of its billions of people because it's those people that represent the future of the internet. 
So all of these things are critical, not just to us here in South Africa, but to the continent. But all of us are thinking about the right way to be building businesses for the future, to be investing for the future, and being mindful of the right things going forward.